On Acoustic Tuesday, episode 16, your Guitar Geek library is gonna grow by one book. You're gonna find out five signs that your six string friend might be thirsty. And a first in Acoustic Tuesday history, we're gonna hear from a special guest. All that and more right after this. If you believe that playing acoustic guitar is about sharing the joy of music with friends and family, not just mastering the technical side of playing, then this show is your dream come true. Every Tuesday morning, I give you my list of exciting guitar geek discoveries, gear, and new music so you can stay inspired to live your best acoustic life. I'm Tony Castro, and this is the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Guitar geeks, unite. Cheers and welcome to Acoustic Tuesday. Uh, it is Acoustic Tuesday, episode 16, sweet 16, and man, have we got an amazing episode for you today. And when I mean we, of course, I'm referring to my bearded brethren who happen to be very flannable today. Hello, Tony. Noah, Jacob Heckman Tony. Jr., the first, Levi. and of course, Tony. Levi Kawila, the man with the technical hey, plan. Gentlemen, I must say you look, <laughs> you look fantastic today yeah. i'm smiling big right now you just can't tell yeah <laughs> for those listening uh uh levi and noah have have donned the ceremonial beards and flannels for today's episode uh for a reason you'll you'll learn of as we go through my guitar geek it's a list momentous today. occasion it's a great occasion it's, it, i can't i'm i just i feel i kind of look over here and i look over there and i feel like there's mirrors all around the room Right. Yeah. It's pretty. I mean, I gotta say that the beards are are looking nice. This is fun, gentlemen. It's fun. Yeah, you know, this is really more an exercise for you than yeah. it is for us. <laughs> oh, is that so? Yeah. Why? <laughs> Can you explain more how, how that is? Well, facing yourself is always the most difficult oh. thing to do. <laughs> That's not... <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, well, uh, as funny. with as with all Acoustic Tuesday episodes, yeah. I've got five killer guitar geek items for you today. But first, we got to kick it off with some guitar geek trivia. And this one, this one is focused on the sunny state of California. So your trivia question for today is as follows. What guitar maker started to call Oxnard, California, one of its homes around 2011? Was it Taylor, Larivee, Guild, or Fender? One more time, I'm gonna read that just for the sake of clarity. Your trivia question today, what guitar maker started to call Oxnard, California, one of its homes around 2011? Taylor, Larivee, Guild, or Fender? Go ahead and ponder that while I jump into the Guitar Geek list today, starting with item number five. Item number five is focused on your guitar den. As a guitar geek, I feel that it's necessary to have the obligatory guitar den, the place where you go to escape the noise of everyday life and, and make some noise of your own. And it should be an inspiring place. You should have posters on the wall and things, things of that nature. But the problem with posters is that sometimes your buddies come over and after a couple glasses of bourbon or scotch, depending on what kind of buddies they are, they could lean against the wall, maybe rip a poster, but it's okay. I was on Martin Guitar's website. I went to the 1833 shop, which is where they have all of their t-shirts and kind of memorabilia. And I found some killer guitar den items. I'm talking making your guitar den pop. These are tin signs. Think think antique tin signs. And the, and the first two that I found featured old ads that Martin used. I, I want to say like maybe middle to late 60s, early 70s uh, on tin, on tin signs that you can hang on your wall. And I gotta say, they just look so cool. They have the old feel. Think like antique shop. Think, think, think. You know, if, if you ever went to your buddy's house and he's got like hot rods in the garage and all those cool signs, as guitarists, we don't necessarily always have those cool signs. Well, these here they are. They've arrived just in time for the holidays. And speaking of cars, Martin also has license plate one uh, license plates one in white and one in black for your guitar. Then you can hang it on the wall. You can put it on your desk. And heck, if you want to put it on your hot rod, you can probably do that as well. But I'd recommend putting the license plate on the front because I think it's illegal to have a graphic license plate on the back. Is that correct? You can't. You you have to have your actual license. It plate might on the depend back. on the state. On the state. Oh, okay. Yeah. So to be I, safe, I would just put it on your refrigerator. <laughs> right, or in your musical. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm going to ask you guys a lot of questions because watching you both talk with beards on is just, it's, it's, it's purely amazing. It's, it's hard, unbelievable. It, it's hard to say refrigerator with <laughs> this pressure on my upper lip. 
Ref- refrigerator. I see. That's why I trimmed mine. <laughs> well, well, you guys styled them just fantastically. <laughs> uh, moving on to item number four, and this is this is where we're going to expand your Guitar Geek library. Now, I've recommended a few books on past uh, uh, past uh, Acoustic Tuesday episodes, and this one is of the biographical nature, and I'm referring to the book called Still Inside, The Tony Rice Story. This is a book about Tony Rice's life. At least that's what I thought it was when I originally order it, ordered it. Now, I, I want to say this book came out around 2010, and I was just jonesing for it to come out, and I ordered it right away, and I got a signed copy, which I'm really excited about. Uh, but uh, I ordered the book because I wanted to learn more about Tony Rice, but the surprise was actually inside the book. No pun intended, still inside inside the book. What this book is, is of course, it is a, a story of Tony Rice's life, but what I love about the book is that it offers uh, insight into the history of bluegrass music because of the way the book is formatted. Each chapter is Tony's life in, in you know chronological order. And then towards the end of the chapter, or interjected within the chapter, there's a, a kind of a segment called In Tony's Words, uh, usually a story that Tony will tell about a certain point in his life. And then after that, there's interviews with some of the players that Tony played with, some of the people that he formed bands with that are incredibly insightful, they're funny, and they give you this um, this almost fly-on-the-wall perspective of not only, again, Tony's life, but the history of bluegrass music. Uh, it's kind of the festival scene and, and, and kind of the hot players of the time, and, and really still currently. Uh, the book's written by Tim Stafford and Caroline Wright. They did a fantastic job. I've never heard of Caroline Wright before, but she did a great job with the book. Tim Stafford is actually a, a fantastic guitar player, and I uh, was so delighted to see his name uh, as a contributor to this book. So make sure to check that book out. I know that there's an Amazon link in the show notes, um, and you can kind of find the book at varying prices, but I know that uh, you can also go to the site, the uh, Still Inside, the Tony Rice Story uh, books site and uh, order it from there as well. Uh, And of course, if you want to access those links, just go to AcousticTuesdayShow.com, click on episode 16. It'll be right there in the show notes. Now I've got, I've got three more Acoustic Tuesday items for you. What I'm listening to this week, uh, oh, I got some good, and of course our special feature, history making special feature. Uh, but first I, I figured if it's okay with Noah and Levi, I'd take a look inside the mailbag this week. Yes. Oh, I, I, that's great. Yeah. Because I got, so, so uh, Tony's Acoustic Challenge headquarters, um, the walls are fairly barren in here. And I think we're gonna order some Martin tin signs to just spice up the place. But uh, last year, around Tony's Acoustic Challenge Jamboree time, we've had a bunch of members come in and visit. And one of our members, Susan A, road tripped across across the country with her mom and her mom's dog, Buttons, in an RV. I mean, it's a great story, it was really cool. And I got to meet uh, not only Susan A, but also her mom and the dog, Buttons. We shared some great conversation, talked about dogs and how, how cool it was to see people jamming together. And, and this week in the mailbag, Susan's mom makes stained glass signs, and she made TAC headquarters a stained glass sign Ooh. that uh, it shows the TAC logo, and it's just so darn cool. And I just think it's the coolest thing. So I just want to uh, thank you from all of us uh, for, for making the Tony's Acoustic Challenge headquarters a little bit more joyous and a little bit more colorful. And this is just darn cool. This is one of the coolest things we've, we've received in the mailbag. So thank you so much uh, from all of us here. Really appreciate it. And um, I, <laughs> the note that came along with it was funny because it described the rather odd packaging. So I'm opening this box and there's like egg cartons and bubble wrap <laughs> and multiple layers of cardboard. I was like, what actually is in here? <laughs> so I was delighted to see that and uh, it'll be nice and at home here at TAC headquarters. So thank you so much. Now, moving on to item number three, what I'm listening to this week, and if you happen to be a fan of John Fahey, I've mentioned John Fahey before on Acoustic Tuesday, um, <laughs> you know you know that John Fahey is, is unfortunately no longer with us, but carrying the torch 
is a guitarist by the name of Daniel Bachman, what I would like to refer to as the second wave of American primitive guitar. Nobody can certainly replace John Fahey or what he did for that style of guitar, but I'll tell you what, if John Fahey was still here and Daniel Bachman was, was uh, meeting with John Fahey, I would like to think they would make absolutely magical music. Daniel Bachman's style is, it, it harkens back to American primitive guitar, but he has his own spin, his own twist. He does this thing with his right hand, I don't know if it's triplets, I don't know if it's just kind of grace notes, but it's, it's intoxicating. His albums are amazing. And I have a, a song queued up for you, and I, I wanna make sure I get it right. It's called Song for the Setting Sun 2. He recorded it at uh, uh, Chicago Music Exchange in Chicago. So go, let's go ahead and, and have a look and listen to this. All right, that was Daniel Bachman's song for the setting sun too. Uh, as I mentioned, he's as you can now now uh, kind of place in your mind. He, he's just a <laughs> truly amazing guitarist with a tone and a vibe all his own, but certainly influenced by some of the American primitive styles uh, greats. Some of the American primitive guitar styles greats, guitar style greats. You you know what I mean. Uh, he's got a ton of albums. I want to say he's got he's got five albums available. Uh, two which pop right out in my head are River and Jesus um, Sinner. Uh, I believe that's correct, yeah. And uh, you can get those. There's links in the show notes. Again, go to AcousticTuesday.com, AcousticTuesdayShow.com, where you can access episode 16 and get those show notes. And, of course, links if you want to do a deep dive on Daniel Bachman. Uh, he's, he was uh, brought to my attention by... Uh, Tony's Acoustic Challenge member, uh, Simone M., uh, who's like, hey, have you heard of Daniel Bachman? And I was like, no clue. And he's like, if you like John Fahey, just go listen to this now. And wow, uh, huge thanks to Simone because that is, um, it was a great discovery and something that uh, I wanted to share with all of you guitar geeks. Now, I've got two things left. One, which is very important to the health of your guitar, very important, especially in the winter months, and of course, the history-making item number one. But uh, Noah... Shall we, bearded Noah? Shall we do some small wins? We shall. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, we shall. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good shot. You two next to each other? Yeah. Uh, how, how is it? Twins. Twinsies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Small wins. Oh man, this is fun. Have it fun, is. Tony. It is. I feel like Are, I should maybe have a different voice with the beard. I don't know. You can go Rumple Stiltskin, however he sounded. <laughs> I don't know. I, <laughs> <laughs> small wins. All right. <clears throat> Locked in. Bob Simmons, small win. 
began giving lessons to a seven-year-old neighbor a few weeks ago, making progress, paying it forward. Fantastic. Right? That's pretty awesome. It's one of the best ways to learn. Oh, is that to teach, too. Is to teach, teach other guitar geeks. Right. Old, young, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> yeah. You, yes. Bearded, not bearded, doesn't matter. True. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, next small win is from Orange Parson. That's what it says. Okay. Orange Parson. Small win. Got my tickets for I'm With Her in Belfast, Ireland. Oh, jealous. On May the 11th, 2018. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. By the way, saw Sarah... I should stop. Jeros. By the way, yeah. True. Yeah. Jeros. <laughs> By the way, saw Sarah Jeros, you said? Yeah. Last year in Belfast. What a player and singer. Ugh. Okay. I, I like... Uh, <laughs> well, it's funny because you're kind of tipping your head up to keep the hair not in your mouth. Right. And, uh, and this is cool. This is a double whammy for this last one today. ASW Wit is hashtag fam jam and small win. Nice. I've been playing guitar for a couple of years now. And about the time I started, my uncle went blind and couldn't play guitar anymore. But he now plays the drums. And we have been playing songs that he played when he was my age. And I love talking about music and playing music with him. And I got tickets to see Tommy, Emmanuel, and Dallas. Whoa, with the wow. tickets. Everybody's getting tickets. There's Jealous. fan jams. There's small wins. That's right. Speaking of tickets, Levi got some tickets. He did. Levi, Levi. what's your small win? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I got tickets to the Foo Fighters this Woo! weekend. That's fantastic. Shout out to my brother, Trace, who will be jealous. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Did you man. feel lonely without glasses? Is that why those those happened? I just had a... Hold on. There's a delay that makes it hard to talk. All right. So, uh, <laughs> no, I just had a moment of... I looked down. There were some shades sitting there, and I'm like, this is as close to ZZ Top as I'll ever get. So I'm going to take the opportunity. It's it's uh, it's really outstanding. Thank you. This is fantastic. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing... How, 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 how. <laughs> Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your small wins and, of course, fam jams with us. If you have a small win that you want to share, it could be concert tickets, a new guitar, changing your strings, learning an F chord, learning a song that's eluded you forever, whatever the case may be. In the comments below, just put hashtag small win and go ahead and type that in. We'd love to feature that on a future episode of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. And the same is true for a fam jam. What's a fam jam? Well, it's when you jam with your family. It could be a son or daughter that you're getting into, kind of getting into guitar with. It could be the case that, hey, I finally jammed with my dad. I, he played forever and I just oh. never had a chance to play with him. Whatever the case may be, hashtag fam jam in the comments below and go ahead and describe it. We'd love to feature those as well. Thank you for those of you who go ahead and, uh, who went ahead and commented on uh, last week's episode. Thank you so much. Moving on to item number two. Now this is this is truly a, a serious matter here. As, as, as down to business as we can possibly get on Acoustic Tuesday, that's the level I'd like to bring it to right now. Item number two are, is five ways to see if your guitar is too dry without tools. I'm not talking a straight edge that you lay over the top to see if the guitar is concave or what have you. I'm not talking even a hygrometer. I'm talking just holding your guitar and figuring out Gosh, is, is my guitar not humidified properly? So here's what I want you to look for, starting with number five, the fret ends. If you run your hand along the neck of the guitar and you feel your fret ends poking out, chances are your guitar is drying out just a touch. Because what happens when a guitar dries out is the wood shrinks a little bit. Metal doesn't shrink, hence you can feel those fret ends. So quick remedy for that is any sort of case humidifier placed up by the headstock that would go ahead and uh, take care of that neck area of the instrument. The next thing to tell, the next sign that your guitar might be too dry is that you might be sensing some weird metallic rattles or maybe kind of almost a maraca-y sound. And I actually noticed this on my OM28 Marquee. The guitar dried out a little bit because I was a little bit lazy with my humidification and the tuner bushings were actually rattling around the tuner posts. Why? Well, again, when wood starts to lose moisture, it shrinks a little bit, making room for any loose part that may be metal to start wiggling, hence the case with the tuner bushing. So any sort of weird rattle should send up a little red flag and you might say, okay, well, it's time to pay a little bit more attention to humidification. Number three, string buzz, fret buzz. 
what happens when your guitar starts drying out is the top does indeed actually physically sink down a little bit. It brings the strings closer to the fretboard, hence closer to the frets. So you might all of a sudden be like, wow, I, I just got my guitar set up a month ago and there's, there's buzzing happening. Doesn't matter where I fret, the there's just all this weird, odd fret buzz everywhere. Well, it could be a function of your guitar drying out. That top is lowering. Again, the strings are closer to the frets, causing that buzzing to happen. So be on the lookout for that. Number two, actually looking at the top of the guitar and seeing kind of a ripple effect. What I'm talking about here is the hard versus the soft grain lines. The hard grain lines are those real skinny ones and the soft ones are usually the wider, paler ones. What ends up happening again when wood dries out is those softer grain lines are a little bit more susceptible to fluctuations in humidity. So those shrink a little bit. The hard ones, not so much. So you get this kind of ridgy effect. You can actually feel it with your fingertips. And if you shine your guitar in the light, you can start to see those, those harder grain lines more pronounced than the soft grain. And last, but certainly not least, the most devastating sign that your guitar is drying out is the center seam crack, or really any crack of any sort. And I'm not talking a crack if you smash it against something, run into a mic stand, not that kind of a crack. I'm talking about a crack that runs parallel to the grain lines that is due to the wood shrinking. And this is, this is in extreme cases, okay? So if any of these previous signs, if you don't pay attention to them, to them, they can actually lead to the crack. So I don't want you to have a crack on your guitar. Most often it occurs at the center seam right behind the bridge, but if, if chances are, if your frets are poking out, there's weird rattles happening, there's string buzz, fret buzz happening, and, and you see that the, the hard grain lines are raised up above the soft grain lines, chances are you should be humidifying already. And if you don't, it can lead to the ultimate sign of a dry guitar, which is of course a crack. I don't want that to happen, hence item number two on my guitar geek list. Now, we have some history to make, gentlemen which is why we happen to be wearing the things that we're wearing. But before we even do that, I wanna hear what people are saying about last week's show. Oh. Noah, do you have any comments or shout outs or anything? Yes, I do. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> uh, starting with some shout outs from those who tuned in to last week's AT. Uh, shout out to Matthew, Guy, Bob, Kevin, Monica, Judy, Brian, Sarah, Gordon, Jim, Owen, Ed, Casey, Chris, Dee Dee, and Ted, and there were many more. All right, so some comments I was able to pull from last week's show. Chris says, <laughs> <laughs> "I love that you're fixing your beard. It's just it's it's really funny." <laughs> okay, Chris says, "One thing that I love to see." Oh wait, wait, let me back up. I'm gonna do that one last. Okay, Beverly says. So glad to be here. It's like seeing my favorite little brothers. <laughs> nice. Nice. Just don't pick on us too much. <laughs> As a Thank little brother, I can say that my older brothers definitely picked on me. Cheers, Nick and Mike. This is why I don't have a beard. Okay. <laughs> Judy says, just thank you so much um, for last week's show. She says, that was so kind of you guys doing the giveaway. You guys are really awesome. I'm proud to be a part of this Guitar Geek Uprising. And you know, I might be a little behind in my lessons with you, Tony, which are fabulous, but I never miss an Acoustic Tuesday. It's so much fun. Even though I'm new, I now feel part of Tony's Acoustic Guitar Geek Fam Jam Show. I love it. Please keep on keeping on. All the best, Judy. Awesome. Thanks, Judy. Guitar Geek Uprising. I, I like think that. something was just coined. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if you, get, if you like bring somebody in to the Guitar Geek world. Yeah, like you could promise free haircuts, or in this case, like <laughs> you know, beard groom, free beard grooming when you join this little group here. <laughs> okay, sorry, no, go ahead. <laughs> Gilbert uh, makes a comment, and he just says, "You are the three geeketeers." Ooh, nice. Which means we probably have to have some sort of sword thing, or guitar thing, or that beard we do. pick. <laughs> and well, like a pick to comb your beard with. Or yeah. Like, okay. Cool. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And lastly, Chris says, <laughs> one thing that I'd love to see in the AT format is for Tony to play a quick song each week. Now that's interesting. Oh, isn't oh it? I like that. Isn't that interesting? I like that. 
We could we could work on that. I'll have to talk to the to the powers that be, mainly Levi, the man with the technical plan. Do we? Uh, let's see if we can get some plus ones on that in the comments. Yeah. Anybody else agree with that or any anything similar to that idea? Yeah. I, you know, that's true. That's a good point. I mean, I just started to sweat a little bit because I'd be put on the spot. But hey, if you agree with it, I'm down. I'll, I'll do it. But, but I don't even have to have a fake every beard. week though, or more like occasionally, or yeah. maybe some other. It have to be a special treat. Uh, right. Like yeah. you know, you can't have you can't have like donuts every single day. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, true. although <laughs> it sounds great, uh, you just can't. I mean, you could, but you know. And we know Tony's playing is basically like eating donuts. <laughs> Exactly the parallel I was trying to make. <laughs> exactly. I was going the treat route, but you know, it's okay. Gentlemen, is, is that, was that, are we good? Yes. Is that all the, yeah, that's okay, great. Awesome. There's, there's so many. Again, I wish I could read them all, but thanks to everybody. You for... said there was one that was Chris. Did you read Chris's? Did I just miss the name? Yeah, yeah, okay. that was his, okay. the last one. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry. Lo lots of shout outs about the geekiness on the show. Awesome. People trying out the Santa Cruz strings. Oh, great. I think uh, one person even uh, ordered a close travel fantastic. guitar. fantastic. I mean, it's awesome. That's fantastic. In fact, you just reminded me. I want to mention that one more time. So during the month of December, there's some special deals that are going on that uh, I, I keep in my desk here. Uh, <laughs> Any of you who are interested in a close travel guitar, go on over to the Close Guitars website and you can qualify for a $50 discount. Um, all you have to do is enter the coupon code TONY50. And of course, for those of you who are interested in trying the Santa Cruz strings, maybe you've tried them and you thought, wow, I love these, these are a perfect match. If that's the case, awesome. If that's not the case, that's okay. But again, if it's the case and you wanna to subscribe to their string subscription program, all you have to do is head on over to their website, tell them how many sets you need every three months and you'll actually qualify for getting a free set sent to you or a dear acoustic guitar geek friend. Guys, I wanna make some history. Let's do it. Yeah. You guys keep fumbling with your beards and, and it's it it makes me feel like you're like signaling. Stuck in my mouth and stuff. Is it like, itchy, Levi? Uh, yeah. It's, it's real itchy. It see 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 the problems that we have to deal with? When I mean we, I'm not talking about you guys. I'm talking about our special guest. You're talking about people with real beards. I'm talking about people <laughs> with real beards. Yeah. Yeah. Real bearded men that wear real red flannel. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've introduced the guitar geek world. Well, you guys probably already knew about him, but for those of you who, who hadn't seen Matt from Eddie's Guitars, uh, he made an appearance on Acoustic Tuesday. His reviews are awesome. His facial hair is epic. And the guy is just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to acoustic guitars. They stock some of the most amazing instruments from some of the smallest bench builders to some of the bigger manufacturers as well. And Matt's knowledge is, is really it's awesome. Uh, talk about a true guitar geek. And I'd like to say that Matt is here with us today. Matt is out on the front lines in the acoustic guitar world. And uh, we've got a special Ask Matt segment. So without further ado, let me introduce to you the Ask Matt segment with Matt from Eddie's Guitars. Happy Acoustic Tuesday, folks. Matt with Eddie's Guitars coming to you, as always, from St. Louis, Missouri. And welcome to the maiden voyage of Ask Matt on Acoustic Tuesday. I'm so pleased to be here. Thanks so much to Tony and Noah and Levi for inviting me to have a, a segment on the Acoustic Tuesday shows. Hope to make this a fairly regular thing. So if you have any questions that I might be able to address, please leave them in the comments below, and, and we'll get to those in future episodes. But I want to jump right into it. Um, and we've got a great question to kind of kick us off here. One that I've addressed a number of times, actually. I'm looking to spec out a custom guitar, but I'm not sure which body size fits my style of playing. Are there any guidelines for picking a body size? Is it just about tone? Should I factor in comfort? And is there a happy medium? Great question. Uh, and I've had the opportunity to sort of go along for the ride with a number of folks building their dream custom guitars. And um, first off, I should start by saying uh, the, the, the comfort aspect is, is huge, absolutely. Uh, you, you don't want to get a guitar that's too small and cramped up, nor too large and, and bulky for your physical makeup. So find a size that's comfortable for you to play that also accommodates the playing style that, that you prefer. Um, 
I pulled out a couple of instruments here just to kind of show a range from, from small to large. This is a Santa Cruz style one guitar. Uh, what most folks would consider to be a parlor size guitar. Definitely on the small side. Uh, would be perfect for finger style playing, light rhythm, um, acoustic blues, even some bottleneck slide really sounds great on a little guitar like this. On the opposite end of the spectrum, this is a Kevin Kopp Trail Boss, another beautiful guitar, but a very large guitar. Uh, this guitar would accommodate much more aggressive playing, whether it's loud rhythm playing or flat picking. Uh, it'll accommodate both of those really well. You can certainly play finger style on a guitar like this, uh, but it, it, it'll accommodate the, the louder, heavier attack for sure very, very well. The perfect guitar for ensemble type scenarios if there's a little competition for volume there amongst instruments. And I should also mention, um, you know, these are a couple fairly classic designs here. There's a whole lot of contemporary, very modern designs too out there. Um, you know, grand concerts, concert jumbos. Uh, so a lot of a lot of options for kind of stylistic preferences as well. In terms of a happy medium, I will certainly gladly give my input there. You know, in a trusty orchestra model, OM is, in my opinion, pretty tough to beat as an all-around guitar that's very comfortable. And uh, I, I pulled out this one here. This happens to be my own. This is an OM from Dana Bourgeois. Um, very versatile guitar, whether you're going to flat pick, play rhythm, play finger style. This covers all of them pretty darn well. If you need one guitar to do everything, a good OM, in my opinion, is very tough to beat. It's comfortable. It's not a terribly deep body guitar, nor is the, uh, the, the lower bouts here ultra large. So fairly comfortable to get your arm around. So, if, um, you know, if you have any other questions in terms of specking a custom guitar, again, please leave them in the comments below. If you're participating in Tony's Acoustic Challenge, figure out that time to practice every single day. You'll, uh, you'll really thank yourself later, and I'm sure your, your playing will show it. So keep it up, and we'll see you guys next time. All right. Thank you so much, Matt. Reporting from the front lines in St. Louis at Eddie's Guitars, and in honor of Beards, Red Flannel, and Guitar Geeks Uniting, I just want to say cheers. Cheers, Matt. Cheers, Matt. Cheers, Matt. <sighs> much appreciated. Mm. <laughs> I, I mean... <laughs> See, Matt, they don't have the practice like we do. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the Maiden Voyage of the Ask Matt segment just happened. And I just, I feel, I am, I am like ecstatic right now. Pumped. This and is a lot of fun. This is gonna go good places. I want, I want the Ask Matt segment to happen a lot. And the fuel for the Ask Matt segment fire is gonna be your questions. I want you to think of, hey, if I was specking out a custom guitar, what would I ask Matt? If I was considering, say, Koa as a tone would, and I don't know much about it, what questions about Koa would I ask Matt? If I was considering scale length, what, what should I ask Matt about it? And gosh, spruce tops, there's all these different kinds of spruce. Well, hell, what would I ask Matt? I want you to ask Matt things. And in the comments below, hashtag Ask Matt and go ahead and put your question. Put your Guitar Geek-centric question. I'm talking about body sizes. I'm talking about bracing patterns, tone wood, scale length, aesthetics, inlay, bourgeois, Santa Cruz, Ryan guitars. You name the question, you know what I want you to do. I want you to ask Matt. So hashtag Ask Matt in the comments below. Put your question in. And you know what? Matt's going to be looking at those two. And I'll tell you what, he's going to cherry pick some dandies for another Ask Matt segment. And I tell you what, if we can, if I don't, I'm pretty sure this is. You guys keep playing with your beards, and it's, it's driving hard, me. Don't you? I mean, it's kind of fun to. Yeah. I mean, this this could be the largest showing of beard and flannel. Most likely, the the last showing. Yeah. Of, of beard. All we need, all we need right now is the uh, what was Tim the Toolman Taylor's sidekick Al? Uh -huh. is that That's Al? exactly yeah. what I thought of. Yeah. When I we at just need myself. Al here. That's right. And it'd be five bearded flannel dudes man anyways a huge huge thank you to matt at eddie's guitars and of course if you do have questions for matt hashtag ask matt in the comments 
If you have a small win, hashtag small win. If you have a fam jam, hashtag fam jam. All in the comments below. And you know what? If you just have a comment for us, just put it in the comments below, please. <laughs> All right, we're almost done with Acoustic Tuesday episode 16, but I've got your trivia question answer, and I want to give a little bit of a, I'm going to look into my crystal ball and see what's happening next week on Acoustic Tuesday. But first, your trivia question answer, and just for a quick review, your trivia question for today was, what guitar maker started to call Oxnard, California, one of its homes around 2011? Was it Taylor, Lerve, Guild, or Fender? Well, if you answered Lerve, you are correct. In 2011, Lerve moved some production from Vancouver, British Columbia to their new home in Oxnard, California. And in 2013, Lerve closed the doors on its Vancouver shop to focus all of their efforts in one place. Cool factoid though, in 2014, Guild also moved production to Oxnard, California. Hmm. Pretty loaded question with some, some very, very clear, um, what, did, what did we call those answers? Uh, decoys? Decoys. decoys. Yeah, you yeah. tricked me when you I were, mean... when you were uh, <laughs> testing it on me. You totally tricked me. <laughs> well, Taylor's in El Cajon, Fender's in Corona. Larave is, of course, in Oxnard now, and Guild moved uh, from the East Coast to Oxnard. So a lot of California connections, but Larave was the answer there. Okay, folks, that is it for episode 16 of Acoustic Tuesday. But first, let's have a quick peek into next week where you're going to learn how to never spill your drink again. This is very important. And you're going to listen to an artist who has a very deep family relationship to the history of country music. And last but certainly not least, another Guitar Geek documentary. Yeah, another one. I know I've said, uh, I've talked about him before, but there's another one that you need to be aware of. So thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. Make sure to catch Acoustic Tuesday every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. You can catch it on YouTube or via audio podcast downloadable on iTunes. Thank you so much from all of us, all of us flannable folks here, uh, flannable bearded gentlemen. Thank you so much. Have the best Tuesday that you possibly can. And of course, the best week. And we'll see you next Tuesday on Acoustic Tuesday. Thank you so much. Cheers to you.